let us discuss about uh, schedule development uh, we discussed about uh, verb breakdown structure and here is the picture of a WBS which has multiple levels we have the level 1 here level level 1.1 1 .1, 1 .2, 1 1.3 then the next level that is 1.1.1 .1 .1. The lowest level we call as the work packages and the work packages we decomposed into activities. So here we can see the activity list. So we had the scope document, we decomposed the scope document into a work breakdown structure and the work packages we decompose into activities. So we are talking about two levels of decomposition. Uh, the first decomposition is from the scope to the WBS and the second decomposition is from the work packages to activities. And once we know uh, the activities, the next step is creation of activity sequences. So here, uh, so every activity uh, is either a successor or the successor to something or some other activity or it is a predecessor to another activity. Every activity has an activity code, activity identifier and maybe a small narration of the work. So all this additional information about an activity we call it as activity attributes. So activity attributes are nothing but additional information about activities so most of the software scheduling packages that helps us to that allows us to uh, define even these fields so if you have used ms project on an activity if you do a right click uh, a pop up window will come and it will allow you to define the activity attributes and even enter the activity attributes for every activity in the schedule Uh, now, between two activities, there can be, uh, there are four types of relationships between activities. Uh, so, between two activities, the relationship can be any one of this. The first one is finish to start, means something has to finish for me to start something else. Uh, that means if I should complete the requirements collection before I start the design work. So that is an example for finish to start. Finish to finish, something has to finish for me to finish something else. That means I should finish uh, testing for me to finish uh, defect repair. Then this is start to start. That means something has to start for me to start something else. That means testing has to start for me to start uh, defect fixing. And the last one is a finish to start to finish. That means something has to start for me to finish something else. Uh, here the example can be when the main power supply comes in, maybe I can stop the generator. So for most of the activities, uh, most of the time, it can be a finish to start dependency or a finish to finish and a start to start. And uh, finish to start is the, is the most common one. So between two activities, uh, there can be any one of these relationships. Now this is a precedence diagramming method or PDM. Uh, here we have activity A which has a duration of 10 days. Then we have an activity B which has a duration of 5 days. And activity C which has a duration of 10 days again. D has a duration of 15 and E has a duration of 10 days. So we call this as a precedence diagramming method or uh, activity on node diagram AON because activities are on within the nodes and they are connected by arrows. 
So this is known as the precedence diagramming method or PDM or arrow diagram uh, or um, activity or node AON diagrams. So this is a this is an arrow diagramming method. In the previous one activities were at the nodes and then we connected by arrows. We call it as we called it as a precedence diagramming method. Whereas here it is a arrow diagramming method where activities are on the arrows and then they are connected at the nodes. So this is known as arrow diagramming method ADM or it is also known as AOA that is activity on arrow diagrams. The purpose of both PDM and AOA it's all same because ultimately we, these are all network activity network diagrams and the objective is to uh, prepare the schedule. Now here uh, this is a project with uh, just three activities. Uh, this is the start of the project and activity A we have the total duration of activity A is 12 days and out of that two days is buffer and 10 days is without buffer and the total duration is 12 days. For activity B the duration is 6 days and activity C the duration is 12 days. So if I start the project here uh, I can start the activity A if I start it on day 1 it will get over on the 12th day. Similarly if I start activity B on day 1 it will get over on the 6th day. And activity C if I start it on day 1 it will get over on the 12th day. So this is 12 days, activity A is 12 days, activity C is 12 days, whereas activity B is just 6 days. So activity B can, can be delayed even by 6 days without affecting the end date of the project. So then we say activity B has a float of 6 days. So the longest path in the network we call it as a critical path and uh, the activities on the critical path have zero float. So this project has uh, two critical paths that is activity C is 12 days that is the longest, activity A is 12 days that is also the longest and yeah so activity a and activity C are critical paths for this project whereas activity B is not on the critical path. So activities on the critical path will have zero float whereas activities on the non-critical paths will have float. Your activity B has a float of uh, six days whereas A and C float is zero. So activity, uh, the critical path is the longest path in the network. A project can have multiple critical paths. Activities on the critical path have zero float. Um, now if you, if you look at activity B, if I start it on day 1, I can complete it on day 6. At the same time, even if I start it on day 7, uh, I can complete it on day 12 and the project will not slip because the other activities are getting completed on day 12 so even if I complete activity B on day 12 the project is not going to slip then we say early start is 1 and early finish is 6 late start is 7 and late finish is 12 uh, so float is late start minus early start or late, late finish minus early finish that is 12 minus 6 that is 6 days. So
So activity B has a float of six days, whereas activity A and C, they don't have float. Uh, and they are critical paths. Unfortunately, this project has two paths, which is the longest path, 12 days each. That means uh, start activity C and end is a critical path, and start activity A and end is a critical path, uh, and start activity B and end that is not a critical path because it has a float. So the idea of this slide was to explain uh, buffer, early start, early finish, late start, late finish and float and critical path. If that much is clear then uh, the objective of this video is accomplished and we'll have, I'll, I, I, I'll come out with another video where I'll literally take you through uh, working out of the critical path uh, using a precedence diagramming method, PDM. So that I'll show in the next video. If you have any doubts, please post your doubts as comments to this video and I'll answer them. Thank you.